welcome to Yarngasm, my podcast about mainly knitting, sewing, and whatever crafty rabbit hole I happen to be diving down, uh, which there are quite a bit of crafty rabbit holes that I find myself diving down, but uh, this week I think we are just sticking to knitting and and knitting. Anyway, welcome to the show. I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your day to chat about all these things with me. I'm Kristen, by the way, uh, also known as Vine on Ravelry, uh, on pretty much everywhere on the interwebs, uh, and Instagram, where I am most active. Uh, and if you would like to partake in, you know, any knit-alongs that are happening on the show, or giveaways, or or just general chatter around the podcast, hop on over to Ravelry and join the Yarngasm Ravelry group. And speaking of knit alongs. I have one announcement to announce uh, before I get into what I've been making this week. We have the Forest Pig Knit Along that is going to kick off this Saturday, September 22nd, and that is a knit along that I am co-hosting with my good friend Nina of the This Old Knit podcast. She's also Ine on Instagram if you'd like to follow her there as well, uh, and I will link to her podcast and pretty much everything else that I chat about in the podcast in the description box below, so definitely be sure to check that out. But yes, we are going to be knitting the Way Through the Woods Mittens, a really awesome pattern by Erica Mount. And if you'd like to know why we are calling it the Forest Pig Mid Along, uh, you're gonna have to hop on over to the Yarngasm Ravelry group because I, I think I described it, I, I think I talked about it a couple times on previous episodes, so instead of repeating myself, uh, I'm just gonna go over there. But it's gonna be a fun cal, uh, so I hope you guys have your yarn ready. I am still deciding, I think I'm all settled. Let me show you what I have in mind. So these are the color combinations that I have in mind. Uh, the first one that I think I'm going to go along with is some yarn that I picked up in Edinburgh, the Edinburgh Yarn Festival, uh, some yarn by Little Gray Sheep. And I bought two of each because they are mini skeins, um, but they're these really beautiful, delicate, soft uh, colors. And then the other combination that I'm thinking of is uh, some yarn by Rauma, and they're actually two different bases, but not but not too far off where I think they could be used together. So this one's more of like a golden uh, yellow green, and then this is kind of like an icy blue. Yeah, uh, again, I'm probably leaning more towards the, the first uh, pair that I showed you, but I'm excited to cast on, and I hope you guys are too. There are a bunch of people who have already joined our groups uh, for the knit along and have already picked out their colorways. It's it's really exciting, guys. Uh, and again, it's kicking off this Saturday, uh, September 22nd, and is ending uh, November 22nd. So it's it's a pretty long dura it's a pretty long duration for a cal, just giving you guys plenty of time because it does involve Latvian braids and color work, and you have to knit too. So uh, I think. That that's plenty of time. Double dipping is highly encouraged, so post in my Ravelry group and Nina's to uh, qualify double to win prizes. So uh, prizes are still TBD to be determined, uh, but I will keep you posted on that. So I think that is it for announcements, administrati, whatever you want to call it. So before I get into what I've been making, just a quick word from my sponsor, my amazing sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, business, tech, and more, even sewing in the fiber arts. As you know, I'm improving my photo skills and doing so by binge watching photography classes on Skillshare. And because I know you love learning new things too, I partnered up with Skillshare and they are offering my viewers two months free to try their platform. So give Skillshare a go and learn something new. Just click on the link in the description box below, entering the code at checkout and enjoy. And thanks Skillshare. All right, you guys, I have some exciting news. I finished my hoopla. So a couple of episodes ago, I had cast this on and it was literally flying off my needles and I would have finished sooner, except I ran out of yarn. Um, I, I played yarn chicken and the yarn chicken won. The pattern is a beautiful pattern by Diana Walla uh, and she designed this for Pom Pom and this is their, I think fifth, their fifth anniversary issue. So here's the pattern in the book uh, and what inspired me to cast on is that Diana actually published a tutorial on how to knit a Latvian braid and she used the hoopla hat as her example. So if you look closely, you can see that after you do the ribbing, there's this really awesome Latvian braid detail happening. Uh, and then just the hat is essentially just a really quick sampler of color work, so I, I highly recommend it. Like, if you are new to color work, this is a great beginner pattern. Uh, and the Latvian braid is not difficult at all. Um, it, was, it was actually very, very easy. A little fiddly, but it's 
in hindsight, it's super easy. Um, and yeah, I definitely recommend it because you are knitting worsted weight and it's, it's a hat, it knits up super quick. So back to what I was talking about, the yarn. Um, when I saw the tutorial, I was really inspired to cast it on. So I went stash diving and realized I don't have too much, uh, I don't have too much worsted weight in my stash. But I had two skeins of Knit Pick Swish hanging out in my stash and they happened to go very well together. And of course, like right about here, as I was beginning to decrease for the crown, I ran out of yarn. So, you know, I had to go back onto Knit Picks, order one skein. I have a lot of that yarn left over, but I think I'm just gonna use it for, for scrap yarn, either to hold live stitches on a sweater or, I don't know, it'll it'll be good scrap yarn. So, you know, I'll put it to some good use. Or who knows, maybe, maybe I will I will knit something small, like a pom-pom, or I don't know, whatever. I'm thinking out loud. But um yeah, my hoopla is done, it's blocked, uh, and this is going to Dennis. So, but I will try it on so you can see what it looks like. And you guys, I I love it. It's it has the perfect slouch. Can see that. So I'm gonna try my best today to get some photos of this and then it's going to be gifted to Dennis. So anyway, yay, Hoopla Hat is done. Uh, and if you were wondering, uh, Knit Picks Swish, uh, Knit Picks Wool of the Andy Swish is actually their uh, worsted superwash weight yarn. So uh, in case you were wondering. Uh, and the only other thing I probably wanna say about this is that Knit Pick Swish is, I like it. I have no qualms with it. It is super wash. It does feel a little, it, it doesn't feel rustic as you know, some of you might like your yarns to feel, but I think it's a really good workhorse yarn. It's soft, it's warm, and I, I recommend it. It's great budget yarn. Uh, and yeah, Dennis, Dennis likes it. He's excited to wear it. And yeah, that is all I have to say about that. Next up is my Belmont cardigan, and I'm making progress, you guys. I'm almost done with sleeve one. Uh, as I mentioned last week, I had to, I had most of the sleeve knit. Uh, however, I realized with the decreases, it was just way too tight around my arms, so I had to rip back, rip all the way back up to here, and then just re-knit the sleeve without the decreases. And I'm so glad that I did that because it fits so much better. And then when I got to the point where I wanted to start the ribbing, I just did a rapid decrease in the round, uh, just down to whatever the stitch count would be had I decreased gradually. And it creates this kind of nice little, um, this nice little bell, what do you call it? Bell effect on the sleeve, if that makes sense. Uh, and then I went back down to the smallest needle size. So I like it. I think it has kind of like a vintage, a vintage look to it. Um, but let me try it on for you guys. We have half a sleeve and, oh my goodness. I ordered Grubhub last night and it was delivered and I'm just getting a text notification now telling me that my Grubhub's here. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, um, all right. So we have, ha we have half a cardigan and I, and I am so in love with this guys. It's, it's gonna be my new favorite cardigan. It is fitted, but I do have a little wiggle room in here for my arm and it doesn't feel like sausage casing like the, the last sleeve did. So uh, let me see if I can stand up and show you guys. But yeah. And yeah, so yeah, there's just gonna be, once this blocks out, it's just gonna be just kind of a nice little um, detail on the sleeve. I can't really, I can't really describe it, but you know what I mean, you can see it. So yeah, uh, that is my Belmont cardigan. I don't know what else I want to say other than uh, for uh, the body, I am knitting with uh, US 2.5 needles and uh, for the ribbing, I went down a whole needle size to 1.5, US 1.5s, uh, 2.5 millimeter needles. Uh, so yes, the Belmont is coming along slowly but surely. Um, I have a feeling that I'm gonna get a huge chunk of this done uh, over the weekend because Dennis and I are driving out to see his brother and the kids. So that's gonna be like a two hour car ride. Uh, so two hours each way, so four hours in the car. Yeah, I'm gonna get a lot of knitting on this done. Uh, so that is my Belmont. Next up, we have the throwback cardigan, a really awesome pattern by Andrea Mowry. And I finished the color work section, guys. The sleeves have been separated. It looks like a jumbled mess right now. But yeah, I finished I finished the yoke and now I'm just knitting the body. Uh, and yeah, it is, it is done. I'm not sure where I got these from, but I have these 
vintage um, stitch holders. They're just giant safety pins and they hold your sleeves. And yeah, again, I'm, I'm not sure where I found them or who gave them to me, but I have them and they are amazing uh, for holding sleeves. Uh, and if you are, if you're not familiar with this pattern, it is, it is color work and it is knit entirely flat. So uh, that, that did pose a little bit of a challenge for me uh, because I had to learn how to knit color work flat. And that means you knit your color work on the right side and then flip your work around and purl your color work, which is a little fiddly, um, I'm not gonna lie. And I actually just published a tutorial on how I knit my color work flat. In case you wanna check it out, I'll, I'll pop it up here in the doobly-doo and the doobly-doo down there. Where did, I... all right, Becky, uh, Becky from Stringing It Together always calls calls this thing, all the things down here, the doobly-doo. So that that's where I got it from, in case you're wondering why I say doobly-doo now. Um, anyway, I think it's a fun word. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm adopting, I'm adopting your, your language, Becky. Um, I hope you don't mind. But anyway, um, yeah, the, the throwback cardigan, um, a, a viewer brought this up, uh, commented below last week saying that, well, why didn't, you know, why didn't you just join it in the round and steak it later? In hindsight, if I were to knit this cardigan again, which I think I probably will, um, I would have joined my stitches in the round, adding maybe like five or seven uh, steaking stitches and you know just that would that would enable me to knit the entire uh, cardigan in the round and then when I'm all done cut up the center of the steaking stitches and then open it up into a cardigan and then tack on the ribbing for the opening but you know what if you've been following this podcast you know I love a good challenge and you know this was definitely a little bit of a challenge for me and a, a total learning curve and I totally embrace those but again don't let that deter you from casting this pattern on it's the color work section is super short. It goes by really quick. It's a little slower because you're purling color work on the wrong side, but um, you know, honestly, again, it's a short color work chart. It goes by super quick. And once you're done with it, it's all just knitting and purling. Um, it's all stock in it. And yeah, it's, I love it guys. I'm, I'm super excited to have this done. And I think this is like the very first time I have like three separate cardigans or garments on the go. Um, and someone actually asked me, uh, cause I am hosting the year of the garment knit along and I am so bad at mentioning my own knit alongs on the podcast, especially the, the year long ones. So we have the box of socks knit along that's happening uh, and the year of the garment in which I am, I am aiming to knit at least four garments throughout the year of 2018. So far I have two complete garments. I have the Zweig and I have the Threit Muir. Zweig by Caitlin Hunter and Threit Muir by Threat Muir, I should say, by Isolde Teague. Uh, and now I'm knitting Throwback, I'm knitting Belmont, I'm knitting a sweater for Dennis, which is the Rift Pullover by Jared Flood. Have not worked on it this week. It's fine because right now Rhinebeck is a priority. Dennis is not going to Rhinebeck, so trying to get my Rhinebeck sweater done. Um, but yeah, uh, this has just been really fun to kind of pick up and put down. And yeah, I. I was really craving color work. So, you know, I, I'm definitely happy that I cast this on. So yeah, and I'm trying to think what else I wanna say about this. The yarn. The yarn is again, Knit Picks, Wool of the Andes, not Superwash. Uh, it is their, I think their standard workhorse yarn. And again, it's been so long since I worked with Knit Picks yarn and I really, I really do like it. I would say it's really good, high quality budget yarn. Uh, I got each ball at it on sale for $1.99, but I think regularly priced, uh, Wool of the Andes goes for like $2, uh, $2 and 69 cents, uh, US ballpark. I don't know, but, uh, yeah, I, Trying to think what else I want to say about this. I am knitting this on US size sevens. High high. These are high highs actually, but they're not sharps. They're their uh, wooden ones. So US size seven, 4.5 millimeter needles. Um, I had to go down a whole needle size just because I didn't get gauge with the recommended needle size. So there you go. Yeah, guys, that is it for my works in progress. I do not have any sewing to share with you this week, sadly. Um, yeah, my I, my sewing is a little bit on a back burner for now, um, but that's okay. I but that's totally fine because I have enough outfits to wear for the summer. Uh, I am not wearing a handmade outfit today. <sighs> I know, so disappointing. But uh, I, you know. For the most part, I do wear a lot of handmade garments. And today, today, I'm taking a break. On the other hand, I do have some stash enhancement to share with you. Um, as I mentioned, let me get my box 
So as I mentioned, uh, I did place another Knit Picks order for yarn to complete my hoopla hat, but of course you can't just buy one skein of yarn when you're on a website. Who does that? I can't do that, especially when shipping is like five and change. No, no, I, I wanna make it worth my while. So um, I am in need of a new winter hat. Uh, just, you know, I, I do love my uh, Trekkia hat uh, by Michelle Wong. I've been wearing that to death the past two years. Uh, however, I think it's I think it's time. It is pilling a little bit and I want something just a little bit more uh, casual and slouchy and, you know, so I, I do need a new gray hat. So there is a pattern called, uh, let me see, what is it? The Tied Knots hat by Justina Larowska. And I'm, I apologize if I just butchered that last name, but um, I did purchase some uh, Knit Picks Gloss DK and in their hawk colorway. So here's what it looks like. Just a basic uh, dark slate gray, and it is DK weight, 70% 70 uh, 70 merino wool, 30% silk, and there's 123 yards, 50 grams per skein. So um, I think I got three skeins just to be safe. So yeah, this is gonna become that, and I'm not sure how warm it's going to be, but I really like the hat and I can I can always knit another one. It's super quick, it's a hat. And I realized whenever I knit a pullover, I can never really tell which side's the back and which side's the front. So I had been in the market for labels and since I am knitting Dennis a sweater, I saw in Epix that they actually had labels and I saw these and I thought they were hilarious. So these are by Sublime Stitching and I just had to get them. And they're they're just labels that you sew into your garments and it says, this took forever. So I'm gonna be sewing one of these into Dennis's sweater uh, just, just to remind him, just to remind him how long it took me to knit that sweater. So I thought these were super fun. Um, and the other surprise that came in the mail and totally caught me off guard, uh, if you are, uh, familiar with Jinx Yarns, uh, Lara of the Dyer's Notebook. Uh, she's also one of my really good friends. Uh, she has sadly closed her shop. Uh, she's no longer dyeing yarn, which, which makes me really sad, but I totally understand her reasoning behind it. Um, but you know, and I'm just so excited for what's next to come for her. Uh, but she totally surprised me. She had some leftover yarn and dyed me a sweater's quantity um, of some really, really yummy yarns and sent it to me. I am so in love. Uh, Lara, if you are watching this, thank you so much. So this is her, uh, it was a discontinued base. It's her Targi DK. It's a one of a kind colorway, non super wash, but it's just like this really beautiful, very light mauve lavender color. And it's showing up pretty accurately on camera. I'm gonna have to let this marinate in my stash before I actually dip into it, but she sent me enough to knit a sweater six, Six skeins, I believe. Yeah, six skeins. It's gonna become something special, that's for sure. So that is what I have uh, for stash acquisitions. Do you have a question from the Ask Me Anything thread? I used to call it the Ask Me, Ask Away thread, but for some reason I just decided to change it to Ask Me Anything because that just made more sense. So this is a question that I've recently been getting asked quite a bit, so I thought I would just address it here on the podcast. Um, and the question is, will I be vending at India Tangled this year or Rhinebeck? And the answer is no, I will not be. Uh, I'm taking a break this year uh, just to enjoy the festival myself. Uh, especially because Laura is coming in to visit and I don't want to be working when she's here. But long story short, I really just want to enjoy Rhinebeck weekend without having to work. Um, because yeah, trunk show prep takes a lot of work and by the time I'm all done, I'm still frazzled and I'm not gonna lie, prepping for a trunk show takes a lot of work, a lot of energy and you know, especially leading up to the day of. And you know, last, and last year, well, it was a great time. Uh, you know, I was working really hard and then I did the trunk show and then by Saturday when I had the day off, I really felt run down. Like I had been hit by a truck and I was just walking aimlessly like a zombie throughout the entire festival. And this year I really just want to enjoy myself. Um, so, you know, that's my answer. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be doing it next year, we'll see. Uh, but right now, just as a whole, like um, trunk shows in general, I am taking a break from just because, uh, 
it's not that I don't enjoy doing them, I really do, but uh, from a business perspective, it's not really cost effective for me. And I know I'm probably deviating into a totally different topic here, but I, I think it's worth addressing because I, I do get asked often if I'm ever going to do a trunk show, uh, you know, here or there. And while I do love doing them, I do love getting to meet customers in person and sharing my yarn, you know, letting you, letting customers see my yarn in person, uh, it, it, at the end of the day, it's really not cost effective for me. And given that uh, yarn dyeing is my livelihood, I have to pay attention to that. Um, I am incredibly lucky enough to have a shop update sell out every week. Uh, it, it blows my mind every every time. Um, and I'm, believe me, I'm completely grateful to anyone who buys my yarn. I think it's, I think it's amazing. And uh, it's why I continue to do it. However, when it comes to trunk shows, uh, it, it costs a lot of money and sets me back quite a bit. So not only do I have to shut my online yarn shop down and lose out on online sales, I have to pay for transportation to the event. Um, and then after the trunk show, I owe a certain percentage of my sales to the yarn shop. So if you can imagine, all that really adds up and at the end of the day, I take a really big hit. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's money that I lose out on where I could have made a profit selling my yarn online, and which I believe has a, a much wider reach. Um, so I hope that makes sense. I'm not saying that I'm never going to do a trunk show again. Uh, I'm just taking a small break from it and um, we'll see where we're at, you know, in the coming year. And this is not to say at all that if you are a yarn dyer, you shouldn't be doing trunk shows or uh, selling your yarn wholesale. I This is just what's working for me. I think trunk shows and selling your yarn wholesale and festivals are an amazing way to get exposure, uh, to network, and just get your, your business name out there. Uh, I, I think it's a great way to get your foot in the door and draw traffic to your online site, your online site if you have one. Uh, it, it's just, I've thankfully reached a point where I don't have to do that if I choose not to. Um, and again, that's just what's working for my business. The part that I really love about trunk shows and festivals is that I get to meet my customers in person. And that is so exciting for me. Um, however, I think I prefer um, meeting customers when I'm not having to work. I think when I'm not working a festival, I can meet customers as a festival goer where I'm more relaxed and I'm not, um, stressed out or, you know, I can actually have a, a real conversation with you. <laughs> and, and I think that's more meaningful to me. So anyway, I hope, I hope this makes sense. Um, you know, and kind of answers a couple of questions if you guys have any, because I do get a lot of questions if I'm going to be doing trunk shows or if I'd like to do wholesale. So again, your mileage may vary. This is just what's working for my business at the moment. Again, dyeing yarn is my livelihood. So I have to pay attention to that. Uh, but yeah, I hope that, I hope that answers some questions. Uh, but yeah, speaking of shop updates, uh, I have one coming up this Saturday, Saturday, September 22nd at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And you might notice I'm not doing any more Friday updates. I'm realizing that I really like having my shop updates on Saturdays. Um, that lets me get all my ducks in a row, um, and it just keeps me more organized. So if that makes sense. Anyway, it just... It, it helps my workflow out when I can just have the, the update on Saturday. I am gonna try mixing things up again uh, because I know there are people that don't live in an optimal time zone uh, for my updates. So, uh, you know, just bear with me. I'm, I'm working on it. But uh, yeah, I have some yarn to show you. So uh, this week it is a Volca and Nouveau base update. So uh, Nouveau is my single ply superwash merino base and then Volca is my superwash uh, merino nylon cashmere fingering base. And here we have, so first up we have I Am No Bird and this is my Nouveau base up here and then down here we have we will have some Edinburgh back in stock. There'll be some more Solstice and in Dorsey. And again, Emily is coming over today to dye some yarn. Uh, and yeah, those colorways are to be determined. And as always, if you'd like to find out what other colorways will be in the shop, uh, do subscribe to the newsletter, which you can do by going to volunvineyarns.com and clicking up at the top of the screen uh, where it says, 
uh, newsletter and just enter your email and every week you will get an email uh, from me letting you know what colorways, what bases, and other Volunvine Yarns news there is to be had uh, in your inbox. So yay! Oh, and next week I am actually putting Sportlandia, my sport weight base, into hibernation and replacing it with my Smitten DK base, which is my uh, Superwash Merino Nylon Cashmere DK base. So sweater weather is here my friends and I cannot be more excited. Yeah, so that is it for shop update. I hope you guys can make it. Again, it is uh, on Saturday, September 22nd at 10 a.m. Eastern time. That said, I am gonna move along into the blather segment, a segment where I chat about what's been going on in my life. Should you care to stick around and find out? Uh, and unfortunately, I don't have too much going on. Um, although I will say that Dennis and I started watching a new series on HBO. Uh, we started watching the show called Barry with uh, Bill Hader and, oh gosh, Henry, I think Henry Winkle, the guy who played the Fonz on Happy Days. Um, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of a kitschy show, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, we, we're actually really enjoying it because we love Bill Hader. He's uh, one of the cast members from SNL and I think one of the writers on South Park. He's really funny. Um, so uh, Dennis and I started watching that and I think we're on like episode four or five and it's kind of a play. I want to say if you guys are familiar with Dexter, it's, I would, if I had to describe it, it's kind of like Dexter fan fiction, <laughs> if that makes any sense, because yeah, he's a, um, he plays a hit, Bill Hader plays a hitman who uh, stumbles on an acting class and suddenly wants to become an actor and he's having a really hard time breaking away from his job as a hitman. So if, if that's something that you are into, it's, you know, it's kind of like under the table kind of funny humor. Um, but yeah, we, we really, we've really been enjoying it. I've been watching it, uh, you know, during dinner while knitting on my, my sleeve island. So that's been keeping me entertained and I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, still going strong with uh, my favorite murder. That podcast is just, I can't get enough of it. I really can't. Um, and I saw that they were having a, a live show here in New York City and of course they were sold completely out. So bummed that I, I missed that boat. But anyway, uh, there there's always next time. Um, so I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, this weekend we are going up to visit Dennis's uh, brother and the kids, so our niece and nephew. Um, that'll be fun, and I will have lots of knitting time in the car. And yeah, it should be it should be a fun, relaxing weekend otherwise. But that said, I am gonna end things here. Thank you so much for hanging out. And if you like this podcast, just like and subscribe. It's that side, right? It is that side. Yeah. Like and subscribe below. Uh, I publish a video once a week, every Thursday. And lately I've been kind of sprinkling in the odd extra episode uh, early in the week. So uh, be on the lookout for that. So that said, happy knitting and I will see you next time. Bye.